the, I think the pure intentions of anti-doping the intentions are not bad but maybe it's not well done but uh, yeah what do you think of, yeah I just can say that um, yeah the solution I, I don't see see an easy solution that's what I want to say and I don't want to I could not imagine putting something in my in my body um, and then just to be on the same level as the other guy and yeah then my kid thinks oh this is normal okay I'm not a professional athlete but I do it as well and and then maybe it gets out of control maybe not but I just this is a for me I cannot imagine that no I, I understand your puzzlement and, and your questions and um, and there are no easy answers to several of them but there are elements that can help in 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 discussion and in understanding the complexity and the possible ways of pragmatically dealing with with the problems that are underlying these questions um, first of all the, um, the the question of fairness uh, yeah sports is by definition unfair it's 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 actually the celebration of unfairness um, specifically in, in in your sport or uh, athletics um, where in the end the performance is just a matter of physiology um, uh, and um, uh, yeah and if you have a higher and adequate for whatever genetic uh, reasons uh, you're the lucky one and if if even more you're born in the right country and you were accompanied by the right parents and the right coaches and and uh, uh, and we're lucky enough uh, uh, to win a few races and, and you get a sponsor uh, there you go it's 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 by definition unfair the, the the whole argument of of level playing field is totally fraud it it is it it is it is um it, it is a very strange argument the 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 celebration of world championships etc it's the it's the it's a real celebration of the genetic outliers um it, it's looking in the distribution of the, um, the 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 variation in the, the human phenotype in, in how humans look to those expressions of, of genetics and in, in, in an environment that, that are the outliers are the exceptions so it's 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 very very unfair um, whether it becomes more unfair or less unfair by using pharmacology is in a way irrelevant it's 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 it it, it has it's it's nothing more unfair or 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 less fair than than the fa unfairness to begin with. Um, so sometimes the argument is then uh, um, um, uh, advanced. Well, yeah, but it is an unnecessary introduction of further unfairness and not natural. Ah, it's very difficult in Brian because what's natural, what is unnatural? Because if we look at you as an athlete today. We can actually say that it's totally unnatural. It's it's actually not natural human behavior to behave like you do as an athlete today. That has I mean, there's no value argument in there. Please understand me. I, I have great admiration for athletes like you. I'm an endurance runner too. Yeah. I love running in the mountains and I know what it takes. But it, it's just the observation, the, the 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 way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you um, uh, you take any supplements or not, uh, the way you train, the 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 way you vary the intensity of the training according to the season, etc. It's all planned. It's all constructed. And it's based on empirical knowledge and and actually uh, uh, scientific research. It's it's very unnatural. Uh, the shoes you wear, um, um, the, the 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 swimming suit you 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 carry, depending on the temperature and the water you're in. So th that that's an argument that doesn't really really uh, can convince us when we we start really to think about these questions. Now, the the other point, of course, is is a very relevant one. I I, I would never want to stick a needle in myself. That that's not my thing. I, I hate the idea. Well, th th there is an important question uh, uh, to ask um, uh, in that regard, uh, or, or observation to be made, which is the following. You're absolutely obliged to be an elite athlete. It's, it's a choice that you made, and it's a choice that you made within a certain uh, um, framework of, resonance, uh, uh, of, of reasoning. Um, I looked at a little video uh, yesterday it's the Birdman. It's this crazy guy that uses a uh, wingsuit 
to jump from mountains. He almost killed himself recently on uh, on the, um, uh, the Table Mountain in Cape Town. Uh, he hit the rock uh, just with with his foot or his knee or so, and he tumbled over, was able to correct himself, pulled the parachute, and just got away with it. It's very interesting because the reaction of the world is pure admiration. With some times people saying, well, but this guy is crazy, but it's mm -hmm. pure admiration. But the risk he's taking is just tremendous. Well, he chews in pure autonomy, in a, in, a, in a calculated way, this is my life, this is what I want to do with it. And so you could very well imagine that people would be choosing, again, in another framework of reference, say for example in 20 years or 40 years from now, that uh, the rules have changed, that um, yeah, I'm pretty good at running and um, and swimming and and cycling and uh, mm, well, I have a go to uh, let's see if I can really try to get to the top and find a sponsor, etc. And being accompanied by a doctor, well, stick a needle in your arm from time to time. That it comes with that profession, but at the same time being followed by a medical doctor who makes sure that you don't do absolutely stupid things, because. <laughs> What sports would not be able to live with, of course, if, if athletes would fall dead all the time. We've had that because of the relegation into clandestinity. Yeah? In, in cycling, probably there has been a period, we're not sure, there's no proof, but there probably has been a period where they hadn't understood how to use EPO and they, and they exaggerated and, um, and it led to, to big Is problems. Is it known how many casualties have been there? Uh, 10, 15... 20, we, we don't know really because it's 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 so hidden uh, it was so clandestine that it's very hard to get a good handle on that but you could imagine that uh, yeah well it's part of the profession I mean, it uh, but you, you, you can see it also in this way even even today well you're in, you're in a, in a good in a good type of sports even though for your heart we'll see in a few years no, you're no, taking no, some no, risks no, that you may be aware of but think about football or or skiing um, Downhill skiing. Oh, wow. There is not one champion who still has his knee ligaments uh, in, intact at the end of a career, and it comes with a very heavy price. I mean, they all have arthrosis uh, at a okay, more advanced age, and, and from time to time a skier dies um, or, or goes into coma for weeks. I mean, we had this terrible accident on the Strife uh, two years ago now. Um, we accept that, and, and, and it says, yeah, but well, that's part of the game. That's because of the sports... This sports is that. Sure, but what is, what is now fundamentally the difference between accepting these type of sometimes incredible risks, death, with the risk of, of taking pharmacological substances? I, I don't really see the fundamental difference.